Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to today's meeting. We appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you tonight. My name is Devin Siriaco. And my name is Madeline Jacobson. And we'd also like to introduce the other members of our project team. <laughs> second year graduate students in the Master of City and Regional Planning program at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. In today's agenda, we will be providing a brief overview of our last meeting, followed by a presentation of trends and projections for Oceano's future. The bulk of today's meeting will be concentrated on gaining your feedback on the following three growth alternatives. The baseline growth, the moderate growth in development, and maximum growth and reuse. The presentation of alternatives will be followed by a community feedback session where you will be able to provide input on the aspects of each alternative that you like or dislike. Your feedback will be used by our planning team to design what we will refer to as the preferred alternative for the future of Oceana. Before we dive in, we wanted to provide a brief overview of the community plan process. The planning process has three phases on our end, gathering information, analyzing information, and comparing alternatives. The first phase started in September and included background information collection such as our land use inventory, demographic research, and document assessment of existing projects and plans related to Oceano. The first phase also included our first two public meetings, where we gathered information to understand community concerns and desires. During the second phase, we analyzed community feedback so we could understand where Oceano wants to be as a community. Today, we are in our, the comparing alternatives phase. In this third phase, we have been developing and comparing growth alternatives to answer the question, how do we get there? This is our third public meeting. Our final meeting will take place on March 12th of this year, where we will present the draft community plan. Parallel to the County of San Luis Obispo's general plan, the community plan is a blueprint that guides the future development of the community. However, because Oceano is unincorporated within the County of Slo, the plan is referred to as a community plan. For California state law, every community is required to include the following elements in this type of document. Land use, circulation, housing, open space, noise, safety, environmental justice, air quality, and conservation. We will also include four additional topics for further depth to address unique needs of Oceano. These subjects include health, public facilities, economic development, and urban design. Following this meeting, the planning team will be, be, be developing practical and obtainable goals for each element related to the community identified preferred alternative. Before we dive into new information, we thought it would be valuable to provide a brief overview of our last meeting. Back in December, we met at the historic train depot to talk about Oceano's history and existing demographics. The bulk of the meeting, however, was centered on a community preference exercise to gather feedback related to each community plan element that we just briefed you on. Your feedback was used as a key input into the development of each alternative that we'll be presenting on today. We thank all of those who were in attendance. At this time, we also wanted to call special attention to the tragic loss of an Oceano community member, Larry Ross, who was a longtime advocate for the community. We'll deeply miss his input. We will now transition into today's content, beginning with an overview of demographic trends in Oceano compared to trends in the nearby region. These trends reflect changes in the population and number of jobs available in Oceano and neighboring communities. This graph shows the average annual percentage increase in population in Oceano, Grover Beach, and San Luis Obispo County from 2000 to 2015. 
Oceano has been growing twice as fast as some of its neighbors, but not nearly as fast as the county. Historically, the average annual change in jobs reflects a similar story. Between 2002 and 2015, Oceano grew faster than some of its neighbors and faster than the county at large. But these numbers don't tell the whole story. Although the number of jobs in Oceano has been growing steadily, the ratio of available jobs to the number of individuals el eligible to work has been low compared to neighboring communities and the county. This chart shows that in Oceano, the number of jobs available to number of people in the labor force has historically been about one third that of the county, and lately, just about one half that of its neighbors. In other words, fewer job prospects are available to people aged 16 and over in Oceano compared to those in neighboring communities and the county. We are now going to present three alternative strategies for growth in Oceano based on this data. The jobs to labor force ratio helps us determine growth targets for jobs, population, and housing in 2040. The first alternative, or baseline growth, is constructed from recent historical data of jobs to labor force ratio in Oceano. The second alternative, which is moderate growth and redevelopment, tries to emulate neighboring communities by setting the target to half the jobs to labor force ratio of those neighboring communities. And the final alternative, the maximum growth and reuse, aspires to match the rate of neighboring communities. According to census data, in 2015, there were 827 jobs in Oceano. The future job availability for all three alternatives by the year 2040 are as follows. For the baseline growth, 910 jobs, as shown in orange. For the moderate growth alternative, roughly 1,400 jobs, shown in gray. And finally, for the maximum growth alternative, there's roughly 1,900 jobs, as shown in gold. In 2015, the population in Oceana was approximately 7,800. For the baseline growth alternative, the population is expected to grow to approximately 9,200 people by 2040, which is an increase of over 1,300 people during the 25-year span. This has been calculated according to natural factors such as birth, death, and migration. This chart represents the growth targets for the moderate and maximum alternatives, shown in red and gold, respectively, along with the projected population growth for the baseline scenario by 2040. The population increase by 2040 in the moderate growth scenario is to be over 2,400 people, while in the maximum growth scenario, population increase is to be over 3,400 people. To prepare for future additions of jobs and population, each alternative includes opportunities for housing growth. New units can usually be provided in three housing types, low, medium, and high density. Low density is shown in blue, medium density is shown in red, and high density is shown in gold. Considering the limited opportunities for outward growth and the number of vacant parcels in Oceano, Higher density housing must be prioritized to accommodate all population growth scenarios. The following slides outline a few key definitions of planning terms that will be used frequently throughout the presentation. This graphic provides an illustration of low, medium, and high density housing. The following are the current housing density rates in Oceano according to our land use inventory. Low density Low density residential is 0.5 to 6 units per acre. Medium density is 6 to 10 units per acre. And high density accounts for 11 to 20 plus units per acre. Housing density is one of the key areas that varies greatly across the three alternative growth scenarios. We want to provide you with a visual for the three different housing density levels discussed in each alternative. The images presented here show examples of houses built at low, medium, and high densities. 
Low density housing includes up to six units per acre and is typically seen in the form of single family detached units as shown above. Medium density housing includes six to 10 units per acre and typically includes row houses and townhomes as shown above. And high density housing includes 11 to 20 plus units per acre and is typically in the form of townhouses, condominiums, and apartments. Above is an example of high density residential apartments. An accessory dwelling unit, or ADU, is a smaller independent residential dwelling unit located on the same lot as a single family detached home. ADUs go by many different names throughout the United States, including accessory apartments, secondary suites, and granny flats. ADUs come in many forms, including basement conversions, standalone units such as converted garages or detached structures, and attached units to new or existing homes. This presentation also makes reference to mixed-use developments, which can be defined as the combination of land uses in one parcel. This can typically be described as apartment-style housing over commercial uses such as grocery stores, offices, and retail establishments. The residential components are typically medium or high-density units and are an efficient way to accommodate both residential and commercial growth. And another important concept is that of complete streets. Complete streets accommodate roadway and curb space for all modes of transportation. As this graphic shows, this includes gathering spaces on sidewalks, bicycle lanes, and vehicle right-of-way for automobiles and transit. In essence, complete streets make it easier to cross the street, walk to shops, and bike to work without compromising vehicle activity.